a couple miscellaneous questions, if I may. First one is um, the the Minox or Minox camera that Oswald had. Did that come from uh, Bio or I guess his name is Perez or whatever? Or do you know? Well, the official claim now, and according to Gus Russo and others, the uh, Minox camera was claimed by Michael Payne. And the photographs were claimed to be have ta been taken by Michael Payne, which is a total horseshit story. Okay. Unless Oswald stole the camera and put it in his gear. Mm-hmm. And that's where the police, uh, in the, with the search warrant, inventoried it and found it, along with a light meter. Uh -huh. And attached to the uh, Minox was the standard uh, spy chain with uh, little bulbs on it so that you can hold it to its specific differences to take pictures of documents, etc. What if Michael Payne planted it? Oswald didn't steal it. Now, I'm not saying well, that... the thing is, okay. is that uh, Dick Billings gave me uh, Minox cameras and other photographic equipment to be delivered to uh, various groups that were inserting uh, reconnaissance teams into Cuba. I see. With the provision that uh, life would have first pick of the photographs taken. Later sources showed that the one that I gave to Bio specifically is the one that turned up in Oswald's possession. I see. So... By serial number. Okay. And, of course, Minox uh, will not uh, make a statement as to uh, who they sold uh, that serial numbered camera to. Mm-hmm. And uh, obviously they sold it to a proprietary that uh, was part of uh, the intelligence community or life. Okay. Time life. Okay. That do you... And the pictures mm -hmm. that were taken were of uh, other interesting points, which everybody refuses to identify. Hey, now, I was noticing that it seems like the time sequence of when Oswald went to work for, uh, I guess it's Stovall Childs, the photography firm? Yeah. You, okay. That the timing seems maybe interesting. Do you think that he, one of the reasons he may have been there, I believe the U-2 flights were restarted around that same time over flights of Cuba. Well, they were continuous. They had been halted uh, mm -hmm. when McCone, McCone took over mm -hmm. uh, from uh, Dulles. Mm -hmm. Uh, over a period of time, the uh, U-2 flights over Cuba were slowed down because we had to, had to send uh, a couple of extra U-2s to uh, Taiwan, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where they were based rather than at Sugi. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm wondering if do you think the yeah, reason... The U-2s flew out of Shreveport. Do you think the reason that he may have had the job at Stovall Childs had anything to do with processing or developing um, U-2 film or f photos from Cuba, or is that just wild speculation? Well, the record indicates that he had access to that part of uh, uh, Child, Stagger Stowell Childs that made military maps. Yes. And that many of these maps were of Cuba. Now, at the time, it was prohibited to purchase nautical, maritime, or aerial charts mm -hmm. of the island of Cuba, mm -hmm. supposedly to keep uh, the independent groups from uh, having uh, at their disposal uh, accurate uh, pu uh, public domain mm -hmm. charts and maps that would assist them in uh, their independent operations. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't purchase the damn things uh, after the Bay of Pigs. But Stovall Childs had those? Yes, they did. So the m And it may well be that uh, Oswald was getting some of those uh, uh, maps and charts, both nautical and aeronautical, mm -hmm. uh, so that he could uh, get, turn them over to uh, Anacastro Cubans. Mm-hmm. 
So you would maybe be using the Monox for that, to take photographs of them? Yeah, maybe particular areas mm -hmm. on, on the maps, and uh, also uh, attempt to get copies of the maps themselves once they were printed out. We now have a national a defense national mapping agency, mm -hmm. which in the Grenada invasion failed because the task force that was turned from the Medi headed toward the Mediterranean turned back towards Grenada. Nobody bothered to fly down mm -hmm. the charts of the, neither nautical or uh, aeronautical charts for that task force. Mm -hmm. So we had a, a task force carrier ships that were approaching an area without proper charts, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, in the era of satellites, they could have downlinked those charts and maps, and we had uh, Marines and Rangers and everybody else going in just using uh, uh, a local uh, tourist road map that it. was photocopied and uh, some aerial photographs. <laughs> which if uh, the problem is uh, th their big secure the security wonks are uh, so afraid to put a request in for specific items you know mm -hmm. that it might tip somebody off mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they could have asked for uh, charts reaching from Venezuela Trinidad Tobago all the way up to Anguilla and uh, Puerto Rico and Cuba and not have uh, excited anybody, but they uh -huh. failed to do that, so people that landed in Grenada didn't have the necessary uh, charts, uh -huh. which would cause and did cause problems for calling in air support and uh, everything else and, and even the planning of the missions. Uh -huh. It's amazing how incompetent things can happen even on such a high level. Yeah. Such a simple thing. That's why we have a special operations command now. Mm -hmm. Looks into all the logistics and the we detail. Have central command, and then we have a liaison from central command to special operations command. Mm -hmm. uh, special operations command is here at Fort Bragg, mm -hmm. where I'm at. Central command is down in McDill Air Force Base in Tampa, mm -hmm. where I was at Sun was stationed before. And uh, now we have Southern Command stationed uh, west of the airport in Miami, Florida. Mm -hmm. So now these are people that can reach out and have all of these things and have them updated. Many of the nautical charts that are in use today, uh, the surveys were done by sailing vessels in the 19th century. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, how bad it is. Yeah. I mean, I bought charts up the yin yang over the years wherever I could get them, uh, some distance away from the southeastern United States, uh, say in Texas. Uh, I made purchases in Aransas Pass, in uh, Brownsville, and other areas where they hadn't gotten the word, and still had a stockpile in the back room of nautical charts, and, uh, and uh, at some airports in. Uh, in uh, the New Orleans area, we're able to acquire aeronautical charts mm -hmm. to show Cuba. But, uh, hell, it wasn't until 1967 when uh, the CIA put up for sale a couple of big barge loads of uh, uh, Second Naval guerrilla stuff that we acquired cargo chutes, uh, personnel chutes, that, uh, very costly things for a song because mm -hmm. we made a deal with the CIA guys to get them, and in some of these crates, we found uh, the charts, mm -hmm. and I passed many of those charts off to Alpha 66 and other groups in, uh, six, in uh, 67, just as I was leaving for the West Coast in Vietnam, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they had never been able to acquire them here, even up to 1967, Jeez. because of this... Uh, uh, blockade or whatever quarantine of selling uh, uh, charts on Cuba, mm -hmm. especially ones that show in great detail certain coastal areas and harbors and etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. wonder why there's such... Uh, the Washington assholes don't want uh, people stumbling on things that they don't know mm -hmm. that's in certain areas of Cuba and they don't want people stumbling into those areas where they suspect some things, and they don't want 
people go in public with it. Mm -hmm. And there are things that they know are in Cuba that they don't want in the public domain. They don't want people using those charts to aid them in navigating or doing airdrops or sea landings or whatever. And all it does is put these pit people's lives at greater risk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about raids. We're talking about right. reconnaissance teams. Right. And is that, that still is that still in place now? This restriction on, on Cuban information? Uh, no, because uh, primarily because of Brothers to the Rescue and others. Uh, uh, it's an interesting, it's an interesting situation. Uh, as an aside, comparing with this Chinese uh, mm -hmm. 200 mile economic zone, et cetera, mm -hmm. we recognize uh, we recognize Cuba's authority up to the 24th parallel, mm -hmm. okay, which is just south of Key West, mm -hmm. and that whenever we or any other uh, aircraft files a flight plan, let's say to Cozumel, Mexico, or Merida you have to cross over that 24th and mm -hmm. the brothers to the rescue when they go south in their searches as soon as you're crossing the 24th parallel which is only about uh, uh, 30 miles south of Key West mm -hmm. you have to call Havana Air Control mm -hmm. and tell them what you're doing mm -hmm. and uh, the situation is that uh, uh, the frequency is called high frequency if you're flying at a lower al altitude but a lot of planes don't carry the old high-frequency transceivers, so you've got to be at altitude and call them on uh, VHF. Mm -hmm. And uh, the farther away uh, you are from Havana, the higher you have to be to communicate with Havana. And it's a routine, and it's just like if you want to cross Cuba, uh, you have to pay uh, $50 to uh, Air Cubana through their office in uh, Montego Bay, Jamaica, or in Nassau and go across um, three different corridors that they have. Mm -hmm. But uh, anybody can do 